Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. This is the a monthly Everything in Bloom on the 8th video. Um, I must admit, an awful lot of what's in bloom is not my blooms. They were bought, um, you know, bought in bloom. <laughs> they still count. But um, yeah, there's not a huge amount of my own stuff. But um, anyway, we start out here. This is my own stuff. Um, this is the um, Catherine Zock Make or Mike. Um, just started to open now. I've got no fragrance yet, but this is a very fragrant orchid, this one. And this is one of the um, two Oncidium types that are growing in the house, so they don't, they don't go out in the grow room. Um, this bulb over here has done incredibly well. It's actually got three spikes. Um, it's got the two, one just opening and another one. And then this one appeared. So it's actually got three spikes on one bulb. That's not bad. That'll be the... Um, Soto Anum in it, I expect, <laughs> which is a bit vigorous. Um, yeah, I, I staked this for, I don't normally stake um, spikes, but I didn't want them arching over and hanging out here because I'd knock them. Um, so, And over the back here is another new growth pushing on that hasn't matured yet, so this is going to have a staggered blooming. Um, we've got spikes just starting over here. Um, Spikes just opening. I think the one at the back, yeah, the one at the back's just started to open as well. And um, then we've got a new growth that should again spike later, so that's, it should be in bloom on and off for some time now. So that's that one. We'll come out in here. It's the first time I've had bright light out here when I've done this video for some considerable time. Um, <laughs> I mean, the eighth is the eighth. If it happens to be a dull, miserable day, that's that's just how it is. Um, now I've actually got a Restrepia bloom, but I don't know whether I can get close enough to get that in focus or not, but I've got one Restrepia out at the moment. Let's just move the pot round a bit so that it's at least facing us. It'd be nice to try and catch a bit of sunshine so that the colours show up a bit. But, um, yeah, these are incredibly difficult to film at the end of the day. They're tiny, you know, they're small blooms. Um, and the camera can't cope with the um, patterning very well. Um, to us it looks like stripes. To the camera it just doesn't seem to make up its mind what they are. Um, lovely blooms though. Uh, blooms on and off all throughout the year. And while I'm down here on my knees, the um, species Miltoniopsis has still got this one bloom um, that seems to be hanging on quite nicely. But up the back there, the next spike is pushing on quite nicely now. So this will be, once this comes into bloom, we'll have to have another go at pollinating, which was the purpose of giving me the plant. So I think that's, um, most of the Bella spikes are either blasting or the buds blasting. No sign of one actually achieving a bloom yet, but it keeps going. You know, I, mean, I don't know how many buds there are there at the moment, but quite a few. That looks like it's blasted. That one definitely has. It has now anyway. That spike's completely blasted and died back. It just keeps pushing out spikes, but they don't manage to achieve a bloom. Strange beast, that one. I still suspect it's a humidity issue, and it's just one of those that needs it right up in the sort of 85, 90% to be very successful. Um, and I can't go up that high because other things will find that, you know, bordering on the rot starting in at that level. Um, the Dendrobium hookerianum has still got a couple of blooms in good condition. A lot of them are going now. But we've still got a couple around here in um, good condition. So it's still actually in bloom, but it certainly won't be for much longer. They're uh, dropping off, dropping off quite dramatically now. Uh, they'll be gone soon. There are a few more nubbins that should grow on, so we should get another odd spike now and again. And it's coming into growth up the top as well. We've got some good new growth pushing out. So it's um, the roots have now established, if you know what I mean. So it's now starting to push up sensible growths. Um, I think this blooming put a bit of a strain on it because it hadn't established on the mount. Um, and it's trying to bloom, and it's got canes trying to grow, and new growth starting at the base. So I think that was all a bit much for it. So it's um, new growths, a lot of them just 
faded, they just didn't push on, but they are starting to do that now, so it's coming on. Um, there's nothing going on over here. We've got a new bloom up the top here, rather spectacular. This is the one where the, the buds start opening before they've even cleared the sheath. Very strange one this is. Uh, no ID, just Catlia hybrid basically. Um, this is one of the ones I got at the Welsh Orchid Show last year. Um, and this is in fact um, part of our Catlia series I believe, this one. Um, which I, I don't update very often because nothing much happens. Um, and this doesn't warrant an update for the series because it's, it's getting filmed now anyway. So um, yeah, very real deep rich colour that one. I, I like that a lot and that is very fragrant as well. But not yet, it will be soon. And then coming down here we've got our Miltonia Castanier. And um, I was a bit... It's difficult when you get a, a hybrid that occurs naturally, um, you wonder whether it only occurs one way round, you know, with one pod parent and one seed parent, but doesn't ever occur the other way round. Um, well, somebody may know the answer to that. I'm not fussed, but, you know, it would be nice to know if it can work both ways in the wild. But this one can be found naturally. Um, so it's a primary hybrid effectively. That's um, just opening. A few more buds to come on this one and then at the other end of the plant we've got another spike as well. So this one should be open again soon. And um, down here we've got our um, oh, brain dead. <laughs> Psychopetalum, come on! <laughs> uh, um, and this um, this is being subjected to the um, Michael McCarthy rules, basically. So um, it's currently in coconut husk. It's staying in it for a bit. And when it gets repotted, it's still staying in it. And um, it gets kept very moist. Um, and it's also in a place where it gets quite a lot more light than it would have done if I'd put it where I used to keep the zygos. In the, uh, uh, let's see if I can show it. Um, sort of here yeah you get little highlights of sun at the moment the sun's up there that bright bit yeah so over this side it is quite bright near the glass that sun will move round to there in a minute and this whole side will light up now it's filtered sun but it's an awful lot brighter than where it used to be which is effectively in here which has now become a suitable place for my Miltoniopsis so, yeah, that's where it's going to live for a bit, and we'll see how it does. Not dead yet, I think. <laughs> then coming around here, we've got none of these blooms over here are mine. Well, this out of this lot, these are all um, bought in. And I've just found out something that I need to follow through now. Um, this is um, Miltonia reginellii. And there is a variety, uh, Xenanthina, I think it's called, or something like that. It's the same word that's used on that um, Miltoniopsis species, the variety that's yellow. And would you believe there is a variety of Reginellii where the petals and sepals are golden yellow? I need to get me some of that. <laughs> but... Having found that out, that does explain an awful lot of the hybrids that say they've got Reginellii in them, and you think, well, there's no white. Yeah, well, perhaps it's the yellow version that's going in the hybrids to put the colour in them. Yeah, so. Um, this has got quite a strong fragrance that I'm borderline not liking. It's a bit, there's something a bit strange about it, and it catches my nose when I'm in here sometimes, and I sort of think, on earth's that? Has that cat been in here? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yes, there's a, there's a variety of this that uh, I'm going to try and get. And then the other two Miltonias up here, um, oh, I've completely gone. Not oh, <laughs> have to do pops, I think. Um, but this is the um, Morleana, which is the one that used to be a variety. Um, and has now been given its own status, so this is its own species. Um, oh God, 
I'm going to have to get the tag out. It's gone. Come on. Spectabilis twit. <laughs> now, I can call me a twit. I'm not so sure about you people. Um, yeah, so it was Spectabilis variety Mor Morleana. And now it's just um, Miltonia Morleana. And the Spectabilis is up here. Um, paler sort of thing. Um, both of those are fragrant, but it's a very mild fragrance. I wouldn't say it's, um, you know, uh, it doesn't fill the room. There's nothing out here that fills the room at the moment. Um, I'm hoping that Catlia does when it gets going, but uh, not yet. And then down here, the only, um, the, well, this was a bought-in Miltoniopsis. I just like the colour, basically. And um, I think... Oh, now this, I, I've just, as I've moved forward to film, I've got the fragrance from this. And this is your standard Miltoniopsis fragrance, which smells like roses with a hint of soap. <laughs> and it's seriously, there is a serious hint of soap on this. Um, not unpleasant, um, but this one's quite strong. I'm, I'm getting it, you know, well over a foot away. Um, this spike here has just opened recently, so these are recently opened blooms which means I need to now get a photo because um, the previous blooms that were already open had slight damage on them um, so I wanted to wait because I knew I'd get some nice um, pristine ones open on this spike so that's that one and then over here again bought in not my blooms let's get that catlia leaf out of the way we've got our dendrobium formosum now this is fragrant um, and this smells of, it's not almonds, it's almond paste. It's the sort of thing you get in the, the cakes that they call almond slices. It's bordering on a marzipan type smell, but it's a definite smell of almonds. And it's very, very pleasant, but not that strong. You've got to get in quite close. But I didn't get this for the fragrance. I got this for the size, shape and colour of the blooms. Pristine white, absolutely the purest white. And that lovely deep orangey gold colour in the lip. And um, two blooms on the top of a cane is okay. But a plant that's grown incredibly well, because it will also potentially bloom on lower leaf joints, still right near the top of the cane though. Um, but I've seen a, one of these with a cane with three spikes on the go at the same time and one of them had four blooms on so you can get quite a good blooming from one of these but I need to get this to grow now because I've only got one leaved cane and there is no sign of any new growths and I suspect there won't be until these blooms go and guess what they last absolutely ages but I don't know how long they were open before I got it so they may have used up a fair bit of their um, longevity, but they really do last a long time. I mean, quite honestly, if you can grow the um, black hair type dendrobium successfully, then um, you're onto a winner because most of the ones that I know have got very long lasting blooms that are fragrant. So, you know, but um, they're not... They're not the easiest dendrobiums to grow, they're finicky. Um, get them right and they'll grow incredibly well and bloom well. Get them wrong and they can keel over quite quickly. <laughs> uh, right, so that's that little corner. So I'm scanning now because I know I'm going to miss something. Oh, we mustn't miss our little Phalaenopsis. A uh, little no ID hybrid, I think. I'll check when I'm putting the names up because one of my little... Um, Phalaenopsis mounted versions that live out here has actually got an ID. Somebody found an ID for me. I get lots of people that, you know, when I've got a no ID, they give me ideas. Most of the time they're close but not right. And I went and looked at that one and it was absolutely spot on. So that one now has a name, but I don't think it was this one. I think it was the other one that's not in bloom at the moment. Lovely, delicate little blooms, and it's one of those that has. A spike that has a, a, a one or two blooms at a time but frequently extends for some considerable time so we could have a bloom or two on this for some time yet now the sun's gone in good job I've nearly finished uh, right where are we 
Now I'm going to get this down, otherwise it's going to be in a total shadow. But the little um, bulb of film's on its last bloom. I'll get that where it gets a little bit more light so that we can see it. Um, that was the last one. The, the actual um, blooms fell off of that about two or three days ago. Um, uh, this will be the last one, I suspect. I'm not sure it's going to bloom again. Um, and then it should come back into growth because um, the new growths that are on it they're not the ones that are blooming it's the one before that's blooming um, but we should get some new growths going on this soon and it's quite a staggered plant it is all one plant it is all one rhizome but there's quite a gap here yeah um, but this area up here is the only bit so far to show distinct roots really grabbing hold and another bit Oh, there was another bit somewhere else I saw, but um, the way it had to go on here, it meant that some of the, some like this one here, the latest growth here, the roots are aerial, and there's not much I can do about it. But there's one really strong strappy loop, root at the back of that bulb that's actually made it, <laughs> and it's grabbed hold of the mount. Um, so there's a, certainly enough roots in the moss and on the mount to actually keep that going now, but. Um, this very nearly went in a box to go to somebody else um, and two reasons it didn't <clears throat> I'm getting to like it <laughs> even though this is a tiny bloom it's a, it's a nice colour a nice uniform shape I quite like it I'm getting used to it and in addition to that it was a toss up between two people who got that as an extra and I couldn't make my mind up <laughs> So in the end, I, I, you know, I think the box I ended up deciding on where it might go was full, so it didn't go, so it stayed here. So we'll be keeping it now. I think that's my only bulb of film now, because the Wilbur Chan went with um, Zena off to Italy. Uh, what else did I have? I did have another one as well. I'm sure I haven't got it anymore. I have to look at my notes when I'm sure I've only got one. I may have another one lurking, but I can't think what it is if I have. Um, oh yes I have, it's the Elizabeth Ann Bucklebury, that giant thing in there in the bowl. How can you forget that? I forget it because it lives in there. And it's the only one on that shelf. And consequently, it, it often gets forgotten when I'm watering as well. But, um, it, luckily it's easy enough to just throw some water from the shelf above. <laughs> just pour some in. Ah, right, that's that. That's that lot done, that lot done. Nothing else over there that I've forgotten, I don't think. There'll be one, I'm sure. Right, so we're back round here now, and we've got the last surviving... Sorry, I'm just falling blooms here. We've got our last surviving Mazdavalia on this plant for now. I don't see any more spikes coming at the moment. Um, I'm hoping some of my other Mazdavalias will kick into bloom soon because very soon they're going to get brighter light on their shelf without getting moved. As the sun gets lower in the sky, it starts lighting up the lower shelves from the side. Because at the moment, the light's split between a lot of it coming in from above and some from the side. But soon a lot of it will be from the side. So that's our last Mazda Valley of Bloom on this one for a bit. Um, it did well. It was bought in bloom. Um, with new, you know, with new spikes that have pushed on and bloomed as well, and I like this one. I like it for its uniform colour. It's not trying to be outrageously patterned or anything like that. It's just a simple, good, bright orange, nice Mazda Valia shape. You know, tails nicely extended outwards to make a triangle, because some of the Mazda Valias, the two lower tails actually cross over. Which, when they cross, they look quite good, but when they just sort of hang down together, they don't look so good. So that's that one. We've got our, um, I'll have to get this out, I suppose, the uh, Dendrobium Cuthbert Sonii that I got from Lynn when we had our little garden party, as close to a garden party as we're going to get this year. Um, that's a typical form of the colours there can be. Um, and it's actually a hybrid. It's um, it's Cuthbert Sonii crossed with something else that I can never remember because I 
because I have trouble saying it, and then that resulting cross is crossed back with Cusp Cuthbertsonia bicolor. bicolor. Um, so it's a bit of a mix, but Cuthbertsonia itself can come in quite a few shades. Um, very, very long lasting blooms. In ideal conditions, four to six months. Unfortunately, once they're in bloom, they tend to slow right up as far as growth is concerned. And then they kick back in again when the blooms are over. And then we've got this one, which in my book is actually got a name and it's, um, oh God, it's an Odontocidium Irish Mist, which if you look that up, you will find this bloom. Um, I don't believe it's a registered name because there is something else. I think there is just an ordinary Oncidium Irish Mist, which isn't a registered plant. And it's nothing like this one, totally different. Um, I bought this because I like yellows and reds. So, uh, and I like this shape bloom. It reminds me of the old Odontoglossums, the old fashioned ones. Some of the originals before all the hybrids went mad and changed all the shape. So I like that one a lot, but it's on its way out. One spike's already gone. Um, and the flowers fall off without losing all their color. Uh, they just end up down in the plant somewhere, ready for the next day. So uh, on its way out, and then I think the last one for now, he says scanning around, yes. Last one, actually open. I can see another one where the bud's cracking, but it's not actually open, so we can't have that one. We'll pick that up as I, as I do updates. But then this Miltonia is, um, I've forgotten, I think it's Summer Glory, is it? Summer Glory. Um, so a hybrid, um, I think that is a registered plant, so it would be possible to look up what's in this hybrid. Um, but there's a, 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 like a set of Miltonias that have got these bars and stripes, whatever you want to call them, blotches, bars, spots, on the petals and sepals, and there's several of them. And they are normally types of yellows and orangey reds and bronzy colours heading towards brown. So multiple choices there to put into hybrids to maintain that pattern. Um, the lip itself just looks like Reginellii. Um, and a lot of the Miltonia lips are have got purple, if not totally purple. But the Reginellii has got a smaller amount of purple than quite a few of the others. But anyway, a um, couple of spikes on this particular growth and one spike on the other growth so I didn't do bad out of that and uh, yeah and, and they seem to be lasting quite well um, there's one blasted there that happens I um, don't think any others did mm -hmm. Got four on this one that one's down to two that is effectively the second spike on a bulb that's not great it's not really up to full size it's full length but it didn't plump up quite as much as it perhaps ought to have. But it's not far off. And then the other bulb round here, just a single spike, which I suspect is more normal. And again, four, four blooms. Um, Miltonias are often around that mark. Four, five, sometimes six. But they're often around that mark for numbers of blooms. Right. Now I am scanning because... And always at this stage when I think I've finished in the back of my mind I know I've missed one but I'm not sure I actually have this time round <laughs> we've even managed to get a Restrepia in this time only because the light's good um, and it happened to be on the plant facing this way <laughs> otherwise that would have got missed out um, right so that's it this time round um, it's funny actually it's um Obviously, this goes in a playlist, um, you know, everything in bloom on the eighth playlist or whatever it's called. Um, that will be on the end screen, so you can click in there and find out what's in there if you like. But depending on the time of year, you know, you can, you, I can get one of those videos with 20 plants in bloom and most of them are mine. Um, and then other times of the year, the main blooming that I've got is stuff I've recently bought in, like now. You know, I've had a little bit of an influx. And um, 
to a degree there's an element of silliness because of these three because they're all quite large plants which means they're going to dominate whichever shelf they go on and they'll need to go on a shelf where tall plants can go and there aren't so many of those. I'm not sacrificing these top shelves, that's my Catlia stuff. They stay. <laughs> They're not moving for uh, Miltonias. Which leaves this sort of shelf up here. Um, you might have to have another shuffle around. See, I've, I've still got some space. I mean, this space here, the stuff that's on here could go in other places. I mean, this is a... Um, Sologeny, so that's shade. <coughs> that doesn't need a top shelf, that could go on the next one down. Um, then there's a couple of Oncidium types, one of which is a short plant, so that can come over here somewhere. The two Deesas can basically go anywhere where they get some light, but not intense light, not at the moment. I'm not trying to get them to bloom, I'm trying to get them to live. Um, you know, so with a bit of shuffling around, there's some space on this shelf. The only problem with this shelf is the long canes because they hang into the plants and when I try and get these mounts down obviously the first thing that happens when I unhook them is they want to come even lower and these canes start digging into the plants below and getting hooked up and knocking them over. Not that that's ever happened and not that I've ever talked about it. But yeah, we'll have to find some places, you know, the downside of buying large plants. Now on this shelf, in amongst these are quite a few smaller plants. Smaller plants can go over there, or come over here, or there's another shelf down there with space. Yeah? So smaller plants, there's some room there. So smaller plants can move because this is effectively a tall plant shelf. Um, because this shelf is totally missing. So we will find space for them. And if I'm finding space for these, they move. When they move, I've got another shelf here. Yeah? So some of what's on there can come over here and those can go over there. So we will manage. But um, I'm probably done with buying for this year now. I was hoping, I mean last Saturday, I should have been at the Welsh show where this one came from. Um, I certainly would have bought a few there because I can, at a show, I can pick them up and turn them upside down and um, give them a good once over. <laughs> so I'd have definitely come home with something, but uh, you know, again, cancelled. I can't see there being any shows until next year. And then, maybe not, I don't know whether people keep their eye on the news, but if you have a look around Europe, there's something rather predictable happening the infection rate is going up. Why is it going up? Because people are getting blasé and can't be bothered taking care of themselves anymore. And who are the most guilty? Yeah, it's the younger ones. Um, very selfish of them, quite honestly, because at the end of the day, even if they do actually catch the virus, they'll probably get away with it and just be ill for a bit, you know, probably a bit flu-like and then, you know, get out and they're fine again but it's who they give it to. That's the selfish part of it. Carrying on as normal is not on. It is not normal out there. Unfortunately, the government don't help, do they? Because they give us, they, they tell us, you know, well, if you're going to be naughty and not obey the rules, then you'll have restrictions and you'll get some lockdowns and this, that and the other. But by the way, the pubs are open, the restaurants are open. We can have an eat out scheme to get everybody to go back into the restaurants and we'll chuck everybody back into school, college and university and all the transport that goes with it. And by the way, you office workers, you need to go back to work and get on that public transport again. But if you don't obey the restrictions, we'll have a problem. What are people supposed to do? <laughs> well, I'm not doing anything different. I'm staying at home. So I haven't got anywhere to go. Uh, but I can understand how people are just getting frustrated of not knowing where they stand and what they're actually supposed to be doing. You get told in one breath to go back to work and then told to only use public transport if it's absolutely necessary. Well, which? Which? One or the other? Come on. Anyway, it doesn't affect me that much. But, uh, yeah. A bit in bloom, I say, a fair bit bought in this time, and um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, quick question on the end, if you haven't all run away. Um, I'd like to know who watches YouTube videos. I don't specifically mean 
my channel or even specifically orchid channels but who watches YouTube videos on a big screen you know like a smart TV that sort of thing yeah rather than just on a phone or a, a tablet with a small screen who watches the YouTube videos on what you could call a large screen I mean I, I've started watching a little bit on the TV I just don't find the search very um, helpful because <laughs> you've got no keyboard at the end of the day you have to keep using up and down arrows to get a letter and then down here and across there to get a letter so I'm not too happy with fiddling around with that when on my computer I just type and it's up there straight away and I've got a large screen on the computer so I've got the best of both worlds so uh, but yeah I'd like to know who's watching YouTube videos on the big screens and if you've watched any of my videos on a big screen like a smart TV that's about 12 foot long and takes up your whole wall is the clarity okay? Is the quality okay? Does it stand up to being blown up to those large sizes? Is it okay? Because um, although I've got a smart TV it's not huge um, I, I don't know I don't I don't watch enough to warrant the, the expense of something that takes up the whole wall. <laughs> uh, anyway, see you next time. Just a quick question on the end. Thanks for dropping by.